I think I've shared with a number of you before how I absolutely love Lent. And at first it might seem a little bit odd or curious, loving something that calls us to penance and to self-denial. But I really do love how each year we come to this season and we hear the timeless call of our Lord to return to Him, to open our hearts a little bit more to the power of His grace, to the disciplines that this season calls us to. And I think it's also because all of us know in the natural world how we need to work hard at anything to enjoy any success. And Lent calls us to work hard in the spiritual life to enjoy that greatest success of a closer and more intimate relationship with the living God. The gospel that we have just heard from, it's given to us in this cycle, the gospel of Mark. We heard it, part of it about four weeks ago. And they're the first words attributed to Christ in the gospel after we're told he has been in the desert for these 40 days. He says, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's a proclamation by the Lord of his coming to establish his kingdom, the fulfillment of all that had been promised for the salvation of humanity. And then there is this urgent demand of us that something is required of us and that is repentance. Repentance is this ongoing call to conversion. It's the recognition that all of us are sinners. We fail in some way in our response to God's call in our lives. And so we have to turn away from anything that keeps us from the Lord to then turn back more wholeheartedly to Him. And this is what we see that's kind of image in our first reading. God had, man had sinned and turned away from God, but God promised that he would bring salvation. And so the first concrete expression of that promise is this covenant that he establishes with Noah. The flood, this event of great devastation, is in fact an event of restoration. We hear later in the chapter that the flood lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Again, we hear in the gospel that Jesus spent those 40 days in the desert. And so you and I are now called to spend these 40 days in our journey of Lent, seeking to respond more fully to the call and to the covenant that God gives to us. Our first reading about Noah and the waters of the great flood and then our gospel and our Lord's call to repentance are tied together, if you will, by the second reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Scholars call it a catechesis on the sacrament of baptism. And there we see that connection between the waters of the flood and the saving waters of baptism, which unites us to Christ and offers us salvation in Him. And so we have come to this Lent and all of us are called to stop and to focus a bit more on all of this the incomparable blessing and gift of faith that has been given to us in our baptism and the life of the church, to commit more and more to embrace this faith and our desire to be brought closer to the Lord. And so that if we see it this way, can't we all see how all of us should love Lent and what it offers to us? Each year on Ash Wednesday, as we did this past week, we hear from our Lord speaking to us in chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. Matthew as part of the Sermon of the Mount. And he tells us of our three-day, three-part program for Lent, that we are to pray, that we are to fast, and that we are to give alms. And we must do these things during Lent, and always. In our prayer, we need to take time each day to listen to the Lord more deeply to receive his consolation, his peace. In our fasting, we need to deny ourselves of things that we can legitimately enjoy so that we will not lapse into enjoying things that we can't legitimately enjoy, to 
discipline our desires that are so wounded and disordered. And then in our giving of alms, we are to open our minds and hearts to allow God's infinite generosity to flow through us. And certainly each year, part of that almsgiving is what used to be called the uh, annual Lenten appeal. It's now called the diocesan annual campaign. And it's that tangible way in which you and I can participate in that almsgiving that is so vital to Lent. Each year we kind of do the same thing. There's such a familiarity to Lent. Maybe that's another reason why I like it. Each year the call is the same. But each year, hopefully, we have grown a bit more to hear and to respond with greater generosity and fidelity to that call. The words that our Lord gives to us in the gospel today, the first words recorded by St. Mark of the Lord in his gospel, are so simple. <laughs> but boy, do they have an importance that is life-changing and life-giving. So let us hear them, and may this Lent be a special time where we will respond more wholeheartedly to the call that it entails. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel.